Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. It's good to see everyone. We have many visitors here tonight. I want to welcome you as well. Whether you're here from Israel or you're a returning rabbi of TBE from New York with his family, or here to celebrate a simcha, or uh, just experiencing TBE for the very first time. We're really glad you're with us tonight. Let's do as we do each week by turning around and introducing ourselves. Even if you know the person near you, say hello, and then we'll begin together. Join together with words, Kol Hanishama to Hallelujah. All living things, all breathing things, give gratitude to God. Let's join together. Kol Hanishama. Welcome Shabbat with our candle lighting on page 120. And we'd love to call Rabbi Harper and Cantor Rosenberg to light our candles this evening. Just want to linger. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, Asher kideshanu b'mitzvotah v'tzivanu. Let 
Let's join together, Shalom Aleichem, page 142. Welcome. to be the bride Lachadudi.
rise and face the rear of the sanctuary as we welcome in Shabbat. seated as we continue on page 150, having greeted Shabbat and entering into our service, we now pray a prayer for the gift of Torah, for meaning and purpose in our lives, recognizing that in order to live a life of deep joy, one needs to experience meaning and purpose and the beauty of giving to others. So we continue together. Ahavat olam, Beit Yisrael, am Torah u mitzvot, chukim u mishpati, otanu limadita. Ahavat olam.
The Shema continues with Ve'ah Haftah, page 154. Let's join together. Ve'ah Haftah, et Adonai Elohecha, v'chol levavecha u'v'chol nafshecha u'v'chol me'otzecha. Ve'ahayu ha'devarim ha'ele asher anochi Hayom <laughs> You little tafot spin a nacha Uchtam tam Am zuzot spetacha Uvisha aracha Leman tiskeru Vasitam metzko mitzvotai Bitam kedoshim lelohechem Ahani Adonai Elohechem, Asher Hotseiti Etchem, Me Eretz Mitzrayim, Liot Lachem Elohim. Ani Adonai Elohechem, Adonai Elohechem Emet. Before we continue with the Michamoch, I have to express my apologies. I promised Rabbi Rosen that I would do a great job with the slides tonight, and I have, I have not. Thank you, Rabbi Harper. <laughs> so we all celebrated a wonderful week of holidays. It feels, wow. We it had, wasn't even a week ago. It wasn't even a week ago. Until, since what? Since we had an amazing trio of women who led us in song um, and joyous, joyous song. And we share together as a community this melody of the Micha Mocha. So let's try to bring that spirit back with us tonight. Who is like you? Adonai Who is like you?
ugealo mi ar khazak mi menu paru khatarona nga Suka is no longer standing in our courtyard, but every single evening, we made a change. You did. Changed it. I changed it. Can I still say what I was going to say? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Even though our Suka is no longer standing in the courtyard, every single evening we ask for God to shelter us in a Sukkot. Shalom. Still works, even though we changed the melody. It's the same prayer. So page 160. I'll sit down. You can Don't, do it. No, I you like want. you here. <laughs> We thought with the changing of the seasons, perhaps a changing of the tunes would be appropriate. This is not changing to something new, but something old and familiar from so many musicians who have come through these halls and brought us joy and love and peace and music. This is one of um, Josh Nelson's settings of Hashki Venu, and I hope that you'll join us with this melody, should it be familiar. Hashki Venu Adonai Shalom Aleinu, Amen. Amen. Page 162 as we continue with the Shamril. The Shameru Shabbat 
We have arrived at the moment of tefillah, page 164. But before we rise, I just want to point out that as we continue through the avot ve'imachot to the givorot on page 168, we are now in the season of praying for God to make the winds blow and the rain to fall. I know it's been so beautiful. <laughs> Happen. In the land but of Israel. Least, We're praying for rain in Israel, that. not Thank in, not in Boston. Line. Yes. <laughs> so let us rise together as a community. Page 164. <laughs>
Baruch atah Adonai, Mechayeh ha-kol. Atah kadosh v'shim ha-kadosh, Ukdoshim b'chol yom yehalelu chasela. Baruch atah Adonai, Ha-el ha-kadosh. We continue in the prayer book through page 180, or we continue with our own private prayers and meditations of gratitude. When you are finished, you may be seated. This past year, every single Shabbat, every time that our community has gathered, lifted our prayers and pled for peace in Israel. We have saved a seat on our bima thanks to our artists and residents in our community, Karen Tab, to remember those hostages that still remain in Gaza, 101 souls and lives. Um, and this week, as we commemorated Simchat Torah, as we marked the Hebrew yard site of October 7th, and recalled those who lost their lives on this day, we installed another art project. Um, this one that was not only made by one artist in our community, but generations and generations, hundreds of our community members that um, gave their time, lent their hands to making these clay kalaniot, these um, gardens of an anemone flowers um, that are a symbol of hope and also of memory. So we will hold them on our bima as well until our hostages come home. I'm sure the installation in the courtyard um, has moved you as well. So let us continue to pray for Israel to hold our brothers and sisters in our hearts as we read together. Sovereign of all the world, shelter Israel beneath your protective presence. May all its inhabitants and defenders know physical and psychological safety. May they find strength and solidarity and be nourished by our love and support. Guide us with wisdom and compassion as we balance the necessity of Israel's safety and security with the suffering of all those who are innocent. At this time of danger and grief, may we have the audacity to pray for peace, just as our ancestors have done each time they were threatened and terrorized. We pray that the people of Israel find wholeness and know tranquility. We pray for shalom in the land we love. Bring peace, bring love, bring peace, bring Shalom, Aleinu, the alcohol. 
ask for God to send the fullness of healing uh, of body, of spirits, and of mind to those who are in need of healing and comfort this evening. We invite you to rise if you have someone to mention for the Misha Berach as we add them to our prayers for healing. Please say their name aloud as you rise. Those on Zoom, please share them with us in the chat. Page 371. As many of you know, each week we also give thanks to God for the sacred moments we've shared during the past week, those God-given times. So if you have experienced a God-given moment during the past week, we invite you to share it with us at this time. Alan. Yesterday, Paula celebrated a big birthday with a zero. A big <laughs> birthday to Paula. Happy Mazel birthday to zero. This is my first year anniversary of my first service. First year anniversary of your first service at TBE. Beautiful. That's worthy of Sheikh Yanu. A first, please. Yes, our B'mitzvah of tomorrow, who will be leading us so beautifully, turns 13 today. Beautiful. And we also have Noah turning B'mitzvah as well. Muzzle Tov. Yes, Ronnie. Another birthday in the family? Muzzle tub. It was my birthday as well this week. So was it a zero? 
It was not a zero. It was not a zero. Um, I do want to acknowledge another, but first I, I do want to say Shekhyan a moment. It's the first game of the World Series. For those baseball fans, it is the Los Angeles Do Dodgers and Mookie Betts against the team that shall not be named. <laughs> but in 1944, there was a Subway Series. The St. Louis Cardinals beat the St. Louis Browns four games to two in 1944. In 1944, the Allies heroically invaded Normandy, marking the beginning of the liberation of Western Europe. In 1944, the Soviets broke the German siege of Leningrad. And in 1944, Rabbi Jeff Lazar mm. was born. <laughs> and so he's turning 80 and is here, and he asked not to be embarrassed, which means <laughs> we must embarrass him. So, Rabbi Lazar, who has served our congregation so beautifully for so many years, will you come forward for a blessing as you're about to celebrate your 80th? Are you able? If not, we're going to come to you. And let's all rise as we surround <laughs> Rabbi Lazar on his 80th. David, you want to come as well? Come on up. So Rabbi Lazar, acknowledging that you have experienced great loss this past year. Um, we also recognize um, the beauty of life and this world and your presence in our community as you continue to greet us with tremendous warmth and love and caring. And we pray that that love that exudes from your soul continues for many, many years to come. Mm -hmm. And so we ask for God's blessing upon you with the words, Eloheinu Velohei Avotenu, author of life, our times are in your hand. We thank you for the blessing of life and for everything that enriches our lives. And we turn to you now with special gratitude to share in the joy of Rabbi Jeff Lazar as he marks his 80th birthday. Be with him now and always, and may he be blessed with health and joy and with the strength to overcome sickness and sorrow. And as we honor him for the gifts that he brings our sacred community, we pray that each day brings him an abundance of blessing. And let us all say, Amen. Amen. And for the gift of birthdays and family and 80 years on this earth, and let health. us give thanks. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech want to say there is a cake outside at Oneg. <laughs> so Rabbi Lazar, if you get out there after half of that cake is gone, know that there is a cake outside <laughs> that says happy birthday to Rabbi Lazar. Um, I also just want to acknowledge Rabbi Franklin, who served our community for four wonderful years. And during his four years at TBE, we glimpsed 
uh, a wonderful rabbi who I always knew had a book in him. And he is writing a book. And I have seen Rabbi Franklin teach rabbis since he left TBE. And I am always just enthralled and amazed and inspired by his learning. So I look forward to uh, reading that book one day. Now you just have to finish it, right? That's the hard part. Well, I say this because many of you received the letter that Rabbi Harper will be leaving our community this summer. And I know there is a book in her. At we least one. one. <laughs> I know, that's true. Okay, one. I should say more than one. Two, three. But uh, Rabbi Harper has brought us with, with her teachings. through, And uh, we're just looking forward to not only being blessed by them throughout the year, but God willing for many years to come. So. Thank you. The Torah that I teach this week as we return to our very beginning with Parshat Breshit is in honor and memory of my grandfather in the week of his first yard site. Uh, my grandfather, Paul Beagle, was a Holocaust survivor and a man who overflowed with laughter and love. And I pray that his resilience and memory will be a blessing and inspiration. I teach this in his honor. So each Shabbat, when we recite Kiddush, we recall the story of creation, which we read from the Torah this week. In six days, God created the heavens and the earth. You know how this story goes. And it culminates in the creation of humanity. And on the seventh day, God rested, the first Shabbat in history. Now, but if we follow the timeline of events as later rabbinic tradition would have them, which blurs the two creation stories in Genesis 1 and 2, on the eve of the sixth day, God created humankind settling them in the Garden of Eden, a paradise free from struggle and want, filled with bounty and beauty, humanity's first home. And that still new sun set and the still new moon rose and God rested and the first man and the first woman slept their first sleep in paradise. And then, on the morning of that seventh day, the first Shabbat, the humans began to explore their new home, watered by winding rivers, bustling with creatures big and small, shaded by fragrant, fruitful trees of every kind. But one winding creature convinced one curious woman to eat from just that one tree in the middle of the garden, and that evening, as the still new sun sat and the still new moon rose on the world's eighth day, God banished humankind from Eden, our first home, but ours for only the first day of history. Now, citing this interpretation, my friend and teacher, Rabbi Tali Adler, offers a beautiful rereading of the first question asked by the paradigmatic medieval Torah commentator, Rashi. Rashi opens his commentary on the Torah by asking, essentially, if the first mitzvah in the Torah doesn't occur until Exodus 12, why does the Torah begin with an account of creation? On the surface, Rashi is asking about the purpose of story in a book of law, but Rabbi Adler reinterprets his question as why does the Torah begin with the story of a lost Eden? Why remind us that we will never truly, at the deepest human level, be at home? Why begin with the story of a lost Eden? It's sad, really, how quickly loss became etched into the, the heart of the human condition, a grief that is exacerbated by having known wholeness in the first place. We might read this as unfair, as unkind, a cruel irony baked in from the beginning, but we might also read this story with a nechemta, with a note of comfort, that even from the very beginning, the human story is one of change. Change, as we all know, can be positive or negative and very often both inextricably twined together. But all change involves some kind of loss of what was and what can never be. And when we experience those more difficult sides of change, disruption, dislocation, disorientation, the fears and unknowns of starting over, of moving forward, we relive a little loss of Eden and its attendant grief. But that little part 
that carries our most ancient human memories feels that pain and recognizes it as something we've been through before and therefore something we can survive again because we have inherited something else from our original ancestors, a gift from the divine in the form of how our story tells us that human beings were created. Now, as traumatic as the expulsion from Eden was, if we scroll back a little bit in the story, we find that it wasn't the first major change that humanity experienced. In Genesis 2, we learn that the first human being, the Adam, began its life in one form, but when a fitting partner couldn't be found for it, God cast a deep sleep on the Adam and took one of its sides, not ribs, sides, to rebuild into the second human, a splitting of the atom, if you will. <laughs> Thank you. In these early hours of human existence, these first human bodies from which all of ours derive experienced a radical rupture one of them missing a part that would never return, and the other pushed and pulled and rebuilt into something completely different. This loss and change was then passed down in the creation of all of their future descendants in the shapes in which we continue to inhabit our bodies, which hold the memories of responding to the necessity and the inevitability of change. But what's even more remarkable than the fact that change is inherent to the creation of humankind is that the very stuff from which we're formed is capable of such flexibility, such resilience, that it can be taken apart and turned into something new and not only survive, but thrive and perhaps even become something better. We read in Genesis 2 that the Adam was shaped from the Adama, the dust of the earth, the verb used here, yatsar, means formed or shaped. And it's the same verb that's used to describe the actions of a potter working with clay. It's an intimate and powerful metaphor for God as the creator. We think of the hands of a potter caked with clay dust, doing the slow, messy, hard work of squeezing, shaping, smoothing, coaxing a humble substance into something as miraculous as a human body. And the fact that clay serves as the metaphor for the matter of the human form is no less remarkable. Clay is malleable. It's a substance that responds to the pressure of being worked, not by bending or by breaking or resisting or melting away, but by bending, reforming, and holding the new shape that it's given. Perhaps the secret to clay's resiliency is in its metaphorical makeup. Clay is essentially earth plus water. Earth gives us groundedness, stability, a sense of always being connected to the ground beneath our feet. But water, on the other hand, is always in motion. It's constantly flowing and even changing forms as it evaporates and condenses and freezes and thaws. So mixed together, earth and water create a substance that's capable of being both stable and also able to change its shape when pressed. Clay is resilient, and if change is part of the human story from the very beginning of creation, the stuff from which we're made is perfectly suited to meet the conditions we're made to face. Because we, clay creatures kissed to life by God, carry within our chromosomes the contradictory qualities of both earth and water. Wherever we stand, we can connect to the steady ground beneath our feet. And whatever comes our way, we can have the flexibility to bend without breaking. My favorite understanding of resilience comes from a little book called Welcome to the Grief Club, which helped me to process my own grief over the losses of three loved ones this past year. Now, resilience, the author Janine Kuo writes, isn't staying steadfast on a path that no longer exists. But resilience is doing the messy, hard, and slow work of creating a new life when returning to the old one is no longer an option. 
It's a lesson that Adam and Eve learned so long ago. Change is inevitable and inevitably comes with loss. But even after only their first day of existence, when humankind was exiled from the Garden of Eden, even then their bodies knew we'd been through this before. We've lived through loss and change. And while we can't go back to the way things were before we survived, we adapted, we reshaped ourselves and began again. Change is the heart of our human story, and that is why the Torah begins with an account of creation. Because it teaches us that we were made from the steady earth and the flowing rivers of Eden. That we are made to be resilient, so that when, not if, loss or change come our way, we are capable of bending so that we do not break. Yes, we were exiled from Eden. And so we all carry a little bit of grass wherever we go. But we were also created from Eden's clay. And when we access our innate resilience by holding on to what grounds us and moving with flexibility and openness towards the future, whatever it may bring, we tap into the little bit of paradise that we carry with us as well. May we each be blessed with the comfort that when we are in the midst of change, that is when we're truly at home. Shabbat Shalom. Can you hear a song? Can you hear a song? May we find our way back home. Can you hear a song? Can you hear a song? May we find our way back home. Let's continue as we rise as a community, page 586, the middle of the page. Alenu le shabeach la ha'ton ha'pol, la teit gedula le otze breishi, shelo asaro ki goye haratzot, velo samanu ki mishpechot ha'adama, Shelo sam chel keinu kahem, ve gor aleinu kechol hamona. Va anachnu gorim, umishtachavim umonim. Nifnei melech, malachei hamlachim, hakadosh baru. Venemar, Vehaya Adonai, Emet, Haaretz, Ayom Hahu, Ayom Hahu, Yihia Adonai Echad, Ushemo, Ushemo, Ushemo. thoughts turn to those now who we carry within our hearts, those who we have lost at this season in years past, whose yard sites we observe this week, those who have passed in the last 30 days, our relatives or our parents who have died in this past year. If you are thinking of someone, we invite you to rise to share their name aloud with us as well as their relationship to you.
Did we miss anyone in the room? So let's also share the names of our community members who have died in this past month. Evan Gately, Donald Glazer, not yet interred, James Herscott, Barry Reeser, Robin Rubenstein, Simon Schiller, Jay Silverston. We have been asked to read the names for yard site of Paul Beagle, Jerry Gottfried, Shirley Ifshin, Robert Katz, Leslie Metz, Shirley Rifkin, Arda Schechter, James Singer, Mary Sissenlein, and Mark Suffren. Let's rise as a community in support of our mourners <clears throat> as we turn to page 598. Yitzkadal bikadash shumei raba. Amen. Ve'alma devrach herute ve'amlich malchute ve'chayechon uv'yomechon uv'chaye dechol be Israel ba'agala uv'izman kariv ve'imru. Amen. Yehe shumei raba mevarach le'alam ulalme almaya. Yitzbarach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnase. Vit hadar vit ale vit halal shemed kudisha brichu. Le ela min kol bir hata vashirata. Tush bechata venechamata. Da amiran be alma vimru. Amen. Yehe shalama rabba min shemaya. Vechaim alenu ve alko Yisrael. Vimru. Amen. O se shalom bimoma. Hu ya a se shalom. Alenu ve alko Yisrael. Vimru. Amen. Yahse Shalom, Yahse Shalom, Shalom Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael. Yahse Shalom, Yahse Shalom, Shalom Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael. May their memories be for a blessing. Amen. Be seated for a moment. Oh, thank you. Um, we want to let you know of a few things that are coming up in this week. Um, on Monday, um, Music Club will be meeting at 1.30 for conversation with Ben Wright, our congregant and BSO's second trumpet. Um, on a musical theme, TBE Holy Singers is meeting this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Um, we have two new classes beginning in the well on Wednesday of this coming week, so October 30th, um, both with Tamar Foreman, um, our incredible educator and mental health clinician, um, and also one of the, um, the geniuses behind our Kalani Oak project. Uh, new open studio series, Text and Texture, a ceramics open studio in Beit Midrash. Um, and uh, in the evening, an exploration of anger. Um, so two classes I would uh, highly recommend for you. Um, we want you to mark your calendars as well for November 4th, our adult learning kickoff um, with dinner and a conversation with um, two amazing authors, thinkers, they're funny, um, and we'll get to learn from them the power of chavruta, of learning together, um, Abigail Pogrebin and Rabbi Dov Linzer. So please don't miss November 4th. With that, my friends, um, we're excited for your mitzvah tomorrow, and thank you for leading us in Kiddush. So I'll invite Noah you all to rise. Samantha are going to lead us, page 123. Let's join together as a community as we rise. Baruch Hataronai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Puri HaGaben. Baruch Hataronai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kishanu Kamitzvotav, Verata Bahanu, Kishabat Kocho, Ve'ahava Uvraton Hinhilanu, Zikaron ha'ase b'reishi Ki hu yom tehila Hemikrai e'kodesh Zeheretziyat b'Yisrayim Ki vanu v'chata V'eltanu kitashta Mikol ha'ayim 
All right, fulfill the mitzvah, take a sip. Just juice. Just juice. And we are so excited to celebrate with both of you tomorrow. Let's wish them all a giant mazel tov. Okay. Beautiful. One more. One, one more blessing. Okay. You guys want to uncover the challah together? Shh. Amazing. You can just put it up here. All right. So let's lift this up together. Here you go. Ready? Baruch Adonai. Eloheinu melech ha'olam, ha'motzi lechem min ha'aretz b'te'avo. If you eat challah, you can take a piece. Amazing. So let us all say Shabbat Shalom. Hi, 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 hi.